it will make it even more cheaper for us, but you catch me out from that one. So we hope that you can use that. So 10% discount for any product downstairs tonight, only after the cooking demo. And next Monday as well will be the same. So think of what you need from the shop tonight, you know, and um, you can take advantage of that for, we've got one more week, that's next week. And we're looking forward for that. You know, if you come here and you know the, if the, the cooking demonstration by the invitation that we let a box or even the email and the message that we send out as well, or you come here because of information, we accept you in our meet with open arms. You know, we accept you as well. And we thank the, for, thank the Lord for the time that we can spend here together to learn about food, you know. Here in this cooking demo, it's not only you learn, you take the recipe with you, but you have a chance also to taste whether it tastes good or not. You know, for me, I like that part because I cook a little, but I eat too much. You know, and uh, I, I like the taste part because you know then that this is the one I like. And you can, you can, you know, say to your wife to cook this for me. Or I'm sure all the ladies here as well, you're a very good cook. And any food that you cook with love, I'm sure it tastes so good when you know that. You know, and for me, when I cook in the kitchen, you know, it's more like an art. You know, you just put in whatever and I said, oh, I think it's too much runny. Then you put a little bit of something, you know. I know I cooked together with my mother-in-law one time, and she said to me, that's really runny, but we don't have any flour, no corn flour, no nothing. And I went there and opened, and I said, oh, breadcrumbs, eh, that will work. You know, and we used the breadcrumbs, and if we put it in, and I said, oh, well, it, it looks different, but it tastes the same thing. So, and I said, Whatever it works, that will make it taste better too. So it's so, so good as well that we can learn from that. Tonight we have, you know, normally when you go to the restaurant, you have a three-course meal. Tonight it's not only three, but we have six recipes there that we're going to learn tonight. So some of those will go together. So it's not just one you're going to learn, but we're going to take some few times to learn as we go for our cooking demonstration tonight. And I would like to thank you for coming along. And I'm sure whether we're ready yet to go or we need some more time. We are ready to go. Okay. Can we hook? Can we hook the projector straight into the camera? Maybe that will work. Once I sing, I'm sure you don't want to learn any cooking when I start singing because I'll put you to sleep. Okay, so we just uh, work it out as we go, yeah? I'm sure, you know, the live stream is important uh, because when you need something or how much that they put in the cooking demo tonight, you can go there on YouTube, put Schofield's Church, and then you'll have there, and then you can follow along while you're cooking. And that's the, the whole point of uh, what they're trying to work it out, which is all good. Well, we should have been here last week. Wait, anyone? 
Well, we, m many of you were here last week and it was all perfect, so I don't know what's happened. Yeah. Technology. Yeah, not every day is a See, day. It's the sunshine. We arrangement on the, on the weekend. Yeah, and then we around again. So, okay. okay, so before we start, let us uh, open with a word of prayer before we start, yeah? Let's just bow your head for our prayer. Dear merciful, loving Father, we thank you and we praise you for all the things you've done for us. We thank you for your protection leading us all here tonight as we hear, Lord, to learn about your wonderful love about us, Lord, and also as well, food that brought us all here together to learn more how wonderful and all these nutrients and ingredients that we can put together, Lord, it tastes different. And that's how we know that even though that we have different backgrounds, different color schemes we have, but we're all one in you, Lord. As we're here tonight, we pray that all we open our hearts and our mind so we can learn about this, so that we can share to others about your love and how tasteful your love for us. We pray that you forgive our sins and accept us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, um, for tonight, for our lecture tonight, I will give this opportunity to Pastor Paul Chapman. He is a pastor here in our church. We are a church here. As we all know, we change things around, and this is our cooking cooking setting and when we turned other things around on a Saturday then that's a church in the front there and here is our this is not a church here it's actual hall function hall here but we all run it together so that we can all benefit from it for our community for you and for us here as well tonight we can learn something that the Lord can prepare for us also and we can learn about food you know I'm sure everyone, when it comes about food, it's something different, yeah? So, yeah? Okay. You all know my name, yeah? My name is Larry. No happy as Larry. That's me. And that's why I'm always here, because food makes me happy too, like you. So, I'll pass it on to Pastor Chap Paul Chapman so that he can carry on with our lecture tonight. Thank you. Thanks. You have your... Good evening, everybody, and welcome. Tonight, <laughs> what happened there? Oh, no. Oh, it was up there. I just saw it. Oh, dear. It was just up there. Don't touch anything. <laughs> Sorry, guys. It's on now. Okay. All right. Vegetarian way. Uh, our screen is a little bit out there, but I don't know. It'll be fine. All right. Welcome. What do we do for those who, who, who has not been here? Who's the first night? First night here. Anyone here first time? Yes. The, oh, well, first time ever. First time ever? Okay, welcome. Hi. How are you? That's good. And uh, anyone else? There was another lady there. Is it your first time here? This series. This series. All right, good. Okay. Well, first night here. What we do, just to explain the program, we have a little talk, which is now only going to take hopefully 10 minutes. <laughs> they have to start the demo by 8, so I've got to finish by 8, all right? So we'll see how we go. And then we, a little bit of health information and advice, and then we go into the demonstrations. The demonstrations run from 8 to 9 usually, okay? So we'll see how we go. Joe, I'm going to have to stand where well, I can't because I'm going to need this. <laughs> No, I need, I'm going to stand right here. I'm going to stand right here. All right, so hindering heart disease. All right, what we want to do is uh, your heart disease is one of the leading causes of death in the Western world, particularly in Australia. Um, heart disease, 
710,000 deaths from heart disease uh, versus cancer, 553,000 in cancer. So just give you a relative comparison here. Medical care, you have some uh, list there, strokes, chronic lung disease, accidents, diabetes, mellitus, flu and pneumonia, and Alzheimer's disease. So these are from uh, statistics about uh, 20 years ago, but they haven't changed that much at all. They're still um, the top five causes of, of a death, heart disease, and things associated with cancer, whether it be lung cancer or other, other types of cancer. So heart disease is a big killer. So what we want to see, how can we hinder heart disease? Heart disease and stroke are our nation's number one and number three killers, respectively. Altogether, these two conditions are responsible for at least 43% of de all deaths in the United States. It's a similar number here in Australia. All right, so both are referred to as silent killers because the first symptom or sign, in many cases, is a fatal event. In other words, you don't get any pre-warnings when you get a heart attack, you could be 42, you could be 82. And you just, there's no other warning except you get that heart attack coming on. Okay, so it's, that's why it's called a silent killer. And you don't know um, uh, how well is your heart right now and what condition is your heart in. The problem is we can't see it. We look in the mirror and what do we see? We see ourselves, maybe we're a bit overweight, maybe we're a bit... A bit uh, um, underweight, whatever it might be, and you try and do something to address that. Maybe you're feeling your energy levels down a bit, but with your heart condition, you don't really know what it's like. You know, my brother, at 50, uh, he passed away at 53. He rang me up about a year and a half before he passed away and said, look, I'm, I'm in the hospital. Um, I said, really, what's wrong? He says, uh, oh, I've got heart problems. Uh, he was having fluid on his ankles. He was only 53, 52 at that time. And I said, well, really, what's going on? And so they, well, they examined his heart. His heart was, uh, he said, I've got the heart capacity of a 95-year-old. He was 52. He didn't know, you know. He, was, and he was died a year and a half later. So it's one of those things. So what can we do then to hinder it? Yeah? So heart disease is often most uh, described, uh, used to describe a disease of heart blood vessels. If the blood through the arteries is restricted or blocked, Severe damage to the heart muscle often occurs, and this results in what is known as a heart attack. Now, in most cases, the condition that blocks the supply of blood and oxygen is arteriosclerosis, caused by a buildup of plaque containing cholesterol, fatty material, and cellular, cellular debris. Now, my brother's heart problem was lifestyle-related, a very hard life he led. Okay, um, unfortunately, he got he um, sadly got involved with illicit substances and it, and it damaged his heart. My mother, she passed away 10 years before my brother. She was only 64 when she passed away. And again, she passed away from, diagnosis was atherosclerosis. And uh, basically a hardening of the arteries due to the buildup of the cholesterol and whatnot. So this is something that um, we didn't know it was coming. I mean, I, I said goodbye to my mum, spoke to her about it on the Monday, and Thursday my brother rings up to say my mum's passed away. So you don't know it's coming on. So it's, it's, it's one of those things, in, in, in those problems where the, and the um, coroner explained, look, what would have happened to your mother was she would have just gone to sleep at night, she probably felt a bit of a pain like indigestion, and then went to sleep. Because what's happened? The heart is starved of oxygen and it stops, and therefore you, you don't, you know, you, you just black out, basically. So in the case of a stroke, it's an artery in the brain that is blocked instead of an artery in the heart. So these two things, so it's blocked arteries in one place or another. So now what are some risk factors? So while we can't uh, necessarily see the condition of our arteries or our, or our um, heart, we, there are some risk factors high blood cholesterol levels, high saturated fat intake, high levels of arachidonic acid, hypertension, low omega-3 oil consumption, diabetes, physical inactivity, and smoking. And uh, my mother was a smoker, okay? So it was a high risk factor, smoker. And she had a high, let's, I, would, I would suggest that she had a high saturated fat intake as well. A lot of... Um, fatty foods that she would, she would have consumed. 
So these are some of the risk factors. Um, but what is the single greatest risk factor for heart disease? The single greatest risk factor is a high blood cholesterol level. Okay, so you've got high cholesterol. That's a, one of those risk factors that you may be headed for heart disease. All right, now what causes high levels of cholesterol? Well, cholesterol itself is 80% of it is made by the liver and 20% is from the diet. There's what we call good cholesterol and bad cholesterol. HDL is good and LDL is bad. So LDL um, cholesterol comes from too much animal saturated fats, too much sugar, and a lack of fiber. All right. So what about good cholesterol? Where does that come from? Where do you think it comes from? Well, kind of the opposite to all this, <laughs> right? Good cholesterol comes from lots of fiber, low carbohydrates, and moderate vegetable oils. Last week, Nathan, uh, Pastor Nathan, spoke on the um, uh, carbohydrates, yeah? And the sugar, yeah? What, what the issue is with the sugar uh, intake versus, uh, you know, sorry, simple sugar versus a carbohydrate. Um, carbohydrates are a slow releasing sugar. It takes a lot more um, time for the body to break the carbohydrates down. But in moderation, you know, all things good in moderation. Too much carbohydrates, and guess what happens? Your body's breaking it down, but when there's too much carbs in there, it doesn't know what to do with it. So guess what it does with it? It stores it. Where does it store it? Here. <laughs> right, right here, or right here. <laughs> you guys are here and the ladies down here, right? So that's what happens with the carbohydrates when, you don't, when you're having too much, all right? So we want to have low carbohydrates, really intake. So nothing wrong with carbohydrates. We need carbohydrates, but as long as they're in moderation and low levels, all right? And moderation in vegetable oils as well. So then why... Why, why vegetarian uh, are we promoting that in view of, view of this uh, problem here? Well, we tend to scoff at vegetarians, but they're doing much better than we are. This is written from a first-person perspective of someone who's a carnivore. Vegans have cholesterol levels so low, they almost never get heart attacks because there's no animal products going into their diet. None whatsoever, including no dairy. We know the difference between a vegan and a vegetarian, yeah? Vegan is no animal products whatsoever, including no dairy, no eggs, no fish, no, uh, nothing like that. Okay, so only things that have grown in the plant kingdom would go into the body. So their average blood cholesterol is about 125, and we've never seen anyone in the Framingham study have a heart attack with a level below 150. So this is, taught, this is the levels that they're using to gauge um, the blood cholesterol, and anyone who's um, over 150, you know, they're, they're going, they're sort of on a, on that, uh, according to their study here, someone over 150, um, heart attacks tend to manifest themselves, but never under 150. Interested that vegans are only are well under 150 at 125. So, um, what can, how can we um, get this kind of, uh, uh, experience in our own lives? Well, low-fat, plant-based diet would not only lower the heart attack rate about 85%, but would lower the cancer rate by 60%. So a low-fat, plant-based diet is what's going to help us with the heart attack rates, and not only that, but also the cancer rates. So tonight I just want to look very briefly, in a few minutes that we've got here, some natural solutions uh, to decrease our our um, LDL levels, right? So, what did I say there? The LDL? That was the. No, the, we, want to, we want to decrease the HDL. That's what we want to decrease is HDL. So, notice this. If garlic is a herbal remedy, it reduces a multitude of risk factors which play a uh, decisive role in the genesis and progression of arteriosclerosis. 
decrease in total and LDL cholesterol, so that's the bad cholesterol, is the LDL, it decreases that, and it increases in HDL cholesterol, a reduction of, of these various other uh, glycerides, fibrinogen concentration, lowering of arterial blood pressure, inhi inhibition of platelet aggregation and diminution of plasma viscosity. What all that means, we don't have time to go into tonight, all right? But basically, it's, a, it, it's, it's good, right? <laughs> Garlic is good to decrease uh, in LDL level by 4%, increase in HDL concentration by 8% and lowering the blood pressure by 7%. So it's increasing the good cholesterol, lowering the blood pressure. That's garlic is a herbal remedy. Who likes garlic? Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I like it on pizza. That's in garlic bread, but that's about it, you know. <laughs> anyway, but that's good. It's good for you, especially when you've got a, a cold or a flu coming on. It has some uh, antibacterial properties as well in the garlic. All right. So in human coronary arteries, the increase in vascular diameter by 4% is closely associated with an improvement of coronary perfusion by 18%. Okay, so these uh, pleiotropic effects of garlic result in a reduction of relative cardiovascular risk for myocardial infarction and stroke by more than 50%. Okay, so basically heart attacks and stroke is lowered by the, um, the, the use of garlic as a, as a herbal remedy. Clinical studies have demonstrated that the daily consumption of garlic reduces the risk of a second attack by 30% in the second year and 60% in the third year. Mortality rate from the second heart attack declines by 50% during the second year and declines by 60% during the third year of garlic consumption. So what are we going to buy at the supermarket this week or at the grocery store? You're going to buy garlic, yeah? Especially now the winter's coming on, all right? There's so much here. On garlic, yeah? I could just stop here, right? We could. <laughs> All right, so um, that's just one natural solution, which is the garlic. Now, if you are living in a home with others and you're having a meal and there's garlic there in the meal, you best to have it all together, right? Because it, it's kind of is a bit of an unpleasant uh, aroma in the house when everybody's eating the garlic and you're not, you know? <laughs> Sometimes it has that unpleasant effect. Studies of uh, diet and disease have shown beneficial effects of vegetarian and Mediterranean dietary patterns. In vegetarian populations, it appears that nuts may be exerting the strongest protective effect. It's been estimated that one ounce of daily nut ingestion may reduce the risk of fatal CHD by 45% um, and when substituted for saturated fat and by 30% when substituted for carbohydrate intake. So these have consistently shown that regular nut consumption can result in a 10% reduction LDLC, the bad cholesterol, within a few weeks. So nuts, okay, garlic, and you've got nuts as well, which are going to help reduce our, our cholesterol levels, the bad cholesterol. Okay, some other known properties of nuts that have been considered to be of possible benefit include high levels of these various things here, arginine, vitamin E, folate, fibre, potassium, magnesium, tannins, and polyphenols, although nuts contain approximately 80% fat, the nut feeding trials have not shown any associated weight gain in those ingesting nuts, suggesting the addition of nuts in the diet may have a satiating effect. So what that means is that, do you know, if you have a milkshake, say, say you make yourself a smoothie, say a fruit smoothie in the morning and you go off to work, um, that'll last you so long, but if you add nuts to that, that fruit smoothie tends to give you that filled feeling so that when you go to work or about your day, you don't feel as hungry uh, as soon, yeah? You feel full. So the nuts have that effect on us. Um, and the reason being is because nuts are, are full of not just fat but also protein and the body takes time to break the protein down. And so having, a, having that protein in the morning gives you a, a nice satisfying meal that will last you quite a few hours throughout the day. So daily digestion of s a small quantity of nuts may be one of the most acceptable lifestyle interventions for the prevention of coronary heart disease. All right, I'm gonna leave it there tonight because now it's eight o'clock, but that's just a few things. So you've got your garlic, which is gonna be help, help to increase or 
increase the um, good cholesterol and decrease the bad cholesterol, as well as um, not just garlic food, but here we have the nuts as well, doing the same effect as well. So there's just a couple of things there on the cholesterol level. Sorry I couldn't go a little bit further with this, but our time's gone. Next week, well, I won't be speaking next week, but next time we speak, I promise I'll, I'll continue on with this. Would you like that? Yes. Yeah? Okay, great. All right, so thank you very much, and uh, then we'll go into our demonstration. Thanks, Brother Larry. Thanks. Thank you, Brother Paul. That's really good. Have you learned something? Mmm, smoothie. Very good. You know, I used to... With nuts. <laughs> you know, when you put And all garlic. This, How about okay. that? Nuts and garlic. You put all those in the smoothie, <laughs> that would be very good too, you know. Good. My mum used to say to me, you know, mm -hmm. chew your food properly because your stomach don't have tea. And I said, okay. Okay. Tonight we're going to go through our cooking demo now and we'd like to invite... Uh, Sister Deborah Chapman, which is Brother Paul's wife, she's going to start with the first two recipes that we have here. So Mexican chili beans and also the cornbread she's going to present for us tonight. You know, so Deborah Chapman is Paul Chapman's wife. You know, did you know that she needs to marry him to take that surname? It's an outstanding job. So we thank the Lord for the opportunity that they can come and, you know, show us how, how these go along. So make sure you can taste these too. And please go home and practice it. I would love to taste someone come turn up one cooking demo and say, oh, taste this, what it tastes the same with last week's one. I'm not saying you have to do that next week, but I would love to see how, did, you try, did anyone try the last week's one? Turn out all right? Taste better or taste yes. close? Close enough. Good. To be to be safe. Yeah, we're close enough. Okay, so we I'll pass it on to Sister Deborah to continue. Thank you. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So this recipe goes with the next recipe, which is the cornbread. And this is um, something that's a typical dish in the South in the United States, which is where I'm originally from, but not the south. I'm from the west coast. So to begin with, um, you can either use the dried kidney beans or the barlotti beans. I've done half of each in this recipe, but I like the kidney beans because it gives it a different color. Uh, it gives it a darker color. So putting the beans in at the end though. So to start off with, I'm going to be sauteing the garlic, the capsicum, and the onion, and the celery. So I'm just gonna turn on the stove. So it's two tablespoons of oil. And first the garlic, which is two cloves of crushed garlic. Then um, the capsicum, I like to cut it a little bit, uh, leave it a little bit choppy, not so fine, because you can see it better in the stew. So I don't know if you could see. We had that last week that you could see in the pot. You don't have that this week. See in the pot? No? It's all right. Then there is a half a cup celery, chopped fine. So celery is finer. If you're putting the capsicum through the food processor, you just leave it a little bit um, more choppy. So there's the celery. And then the onion. It's three quarters of a cup of onion. And that's also chopped fine. Okay, so we're going to saute all of that. You, 
can use water if you don't want to use oil, but the oil does make it taste better. So next, uh, I'm going to add first the seasonings, and then I'm going to add the casserole mince. Um, we sell the casserole mince in the shop downstairs. We also sell the dried beans. Um, so I'll start with uh, the cumin. So it's one teaspoon of the cumin. Cumin. I come from a yeah, different place. Um, now, I should probably have a spoon to get the honey out. Do that one last. Um, the honey or the molasses, they both taste okay. I'm using honey today, but I'm going to do that after. It's to take the tart, tart out of the tomatoes. Um, so I'll do the um, paprika next. And then the salt, two teaspoons of salt. Thank you. Then two teaspoons of chicken stock powder. This is vegetarian. And a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper or to taste. That's what gives it a little bit of a bite. So I'm going to put the casserole mince in next. So that's what the casserole mince looks like. I don't know if you can see from there. It's also a vegetarian. And then I'm going to put the corn. Probably should do the tomatoes next because it's starting to stick. So it's two and a half cups of tinned tomatoes. I don't want to splash it all. And then I'm going to put the honey in now. And the honey is a little bit thick because it's cold outside. <laughs> so I'm going to have to... Okay. So that's all the um, wet ingredients, everything. And the beans I've pre-cooked and they, they look really um, solid. I've just cooked them really well. You can use tin beans if you want, but it's the equivalent of one cup of dried beans. But I would say this is probably about two and a half cups of cooked beans. So I might just, maybe I could get you to do that. So you don't have to, um, don't have to spend much time after you get, you just have to heat the beans through. And I, the corn is optional, but I like the corn because of the, it adds more color, makes it look nicer, and the capsicum, leaving it big, makes it more colorful as well. And like I said, the kidney beans give it a darker color as well. So that's basically the recipe, and they're going to be serving you some samples soon with cornbread. And we, um, we've put some vegan sour cream on top. That's also um, from the store. And the cookbook that this one comes from, and the next one, they're also from the store. So that's pretty much it for this recipe. Go on with the next one. So for the cornbread, I'm just going to grab the next tray. So with the cornbread, your main ingredient is polenta. I have on there wholemeal flour that I have in the demonstration today. You can also use brown rice flour. I did try it and it works just as well. The milk I'm using in this is soy milk. 
I tried it with oat milk. It didn't work as well. I think the soy milk is a little bit more um, thick already. The oat milk is probably a little bit watery. So I'm just going to um, add the dry ingredients first. So the first ingredient is the polenta. So I have one and a half cups of dry polenta. That's from the store as well. Then I have half a cup of wholemeal flour. So I'm just going to put everything that's dry. Yeah. And then uh, the salt, one teaspoon of salt. And then I have one teaspoon of baking powder. And the one I've used is one we have sold in the shop, but we are out of stock of that one. It's a non-aluminium based baking powder, but you can use the one from the shop as well. Just one teaspoon. And you just mix all the dry ingredients first. So the idea is once you get the wet ingredients, you don't want to mix it as much. So this is a savory cornbread. And if you use the brown rice flour, it would be gluten free. Okay, so that's pretty much mixed. So now I'm going into the next, the more wet things. Um, half an onion finely diced. So that's what you may see on the top of your cornbread. If you see something that looks a little bit strange, it's probably your onion. Um, the corn kernels are optional. I did try it with the corn kernels and I thought it didn't look as nice. It does taste good, so I didn't put them in today for the demonstration. And then I have the olive oil here. So it's a third of a cup of olive oil. And then I have one and a half cups of soy milk. So basically you just want to mix it until you've got all the dry absorbed. Yeah, it's fine, turn it off. Okay, so that's just gotten all the powder. Now with the baking paper, you need to bake it in a 20 centimeter square pan. You can use a bigger one and double your recipe, but this one is what is called for for this quantity in the recipe. You just line it with the baking paper and it kind of slides around a little bit, but it doesn't matter. When you take this out of the oven, you just lift the baking paper out and it will be on the baking paper and then you can slice it. So I'm going to try and hold on to it a little bit, but it tends to move around a little bit. So I'm just going to put this in. If you can see the consistency of this, it's a little bit sloppy. But that's okay. And see the paper starts caving on you, but I just slide it around once I've got it in the... Okay, so then just spread it around the top. And it does rise a bit with the baking powder. That just will go straight in the oven. So, like if it comes too far up the edge, I just pull the paper around. And you bake that now for one hour or until the edges begin to brown and the center springs up. I bake these ones, some of the ones I bake for an hour today and others I bake for a little bit less than an hour, 50 minutes. I kind of like it a little bit less than an hour. It's not so um, crisp on the top. So that's your cornbread, so that will go straight in the oven. Thank you, Sister Deborah. Mmm, look, it's good. 
Yeah, I will. Okay. So that's Can all together. That the first two recipe now. That's your Mexican chili beans and your cornbread. Quick, quick, quick! Just so hot, hot. Enjoy. Okay, next to our our next recipe will be huh? Tanya demonstrating that one. That is a creamy spinach and mushroom risotto. So, can't see. Maybe I'll go to the back, yeah. I think Paul Chapman will be looking to that one next week. It's six recipe now, so the corn, corn chips. No pressure, but we're, but we're looking forward to it, is it? Okay, so I'll pass it on to Tanya. You ready? Yes. It's almost ready. I like this one. I'm telling you I like this one because... This is my wife, Tanya. She cook it at home. I'm trying to avoid to have dinner because I need to lose weight. But when she bring the whole bowl to me and I said, oh. and then I slowly scoop into that one till I said, oh, it's finished. It really, it looks like risotto at the end, but it tastes so good because the mushroom is in it. Very nice. So how's it taste? Very nice. Okay, you can watch and then, you know, munching onto that one while you're watch, watching the next one. Thank you. All right. It sounds like he's blaming me for his weight gain. <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> I said to taste, but um, tasting to him means eat the whole bowl, so can't help that. Okay, next on our um, menu here, we've got a creamy spinach and mushroom risoni. Who has used risoni before? Yeah? Okay, risoni is a very small pasta. It looks like grain of rice. Now, this is a pasta dish, but it may look like a risotto in the end. So, I hope you do actually enjoy. It's very, very easy. So, I'm just going to... Turn on my pot here. Okay, so I've got um, two tablespoons of plant-based butter or margarine. That goes straight in. And then I have olive oil as well. So I'm just going to add that straight into the pot. Now, I tend to prefer to cook my, my onions and garlic together. So I've just got that, that here. Now on the recipe it says just to put the onions through. So straight into your pot or pan. And we're just going to Fry that off. This takes no time at all. Um, and it's actually very tasty, very creamy. And that's all thanks to the oat milk that's in there. So, just waiting for this to, you just basically cook it off until it's browned or translucent, the onion. I've got my garlic in there um, as well. And once that's done, not much of a sizzle happening here, but it's on. <laughs> just taking a little bit of time. Oop. All right, 
Once that's done, now in this recipe, you can use any kind of mushroom. Um, the smaller the mushroom, the better. Um, the brown mushroom is probably the best one to go with because the flavor is a little bit more deep in, in the, the brown mushroom. So, but it doesn't matter. Like if you can't find the, the brown mushroom, then you can basically use whatever mushroom that is available to you. If I could, it's, the pot is hot. I'll just, there's no towel that's, there we go. All right. So this is basically what it's, it's looking like. Now, I will fry off, the mushroom basically will, will bring out a lot of uh, water in it. So you want to fry that off until the water evaporates a bit. Um, if it doesn't all evaporate, it doesn't, it doesn't matter, it's, it's fine. There's no problem with that. Now, once that's done, in here, I've got the mix of the oat milk as well as the veggie broth. So I've got here um, both of those mixed up in here. So I'm just going to add that in. Once that's gone in, it will, this is, um, this is the part where you just stand and stir and watch your walls and, you know, things like that. But, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a good idea, eh? Yeah. Okay, once, once the, the, the liquid has warmed up a bit, we're going to add in our risoni. So the risoni looks like this. It's just like a grain of rice, yeah? Now, I'm going to add that straight in. No need to cook it beforehand. And then once again, just stir. This, this has to be one of the easiest things, but, and mind you, it, it probably is a lot easier to make this than to make risotto. With risotto, you're sort of pouring liquid in, giving it a stir, waiting, pouring more liquid in, you know, it's... Whereas this, you're basically pouring it all in and just giving it a stir. And within, say, about seven to ten minutes, um, it's basically ready. So with that... I'm going to add, this is what gives it a bit of that cheesy flavor, which is your savory yeast flakes. So I've got three tablespoons here and that goes straight in. <laughs> exactly right. And we just keep stirring. Now, you can um, go with this with just mushrooms if you like. In this case, I've added mushrooms and spinach. And I think that, you know, the spinach actually gives it a bit of... What, what do you get out of spinach? Iron? Calcium. Yep. Iron. So you, you can't not have it in there. So I'm going to add the baby spinach. Now, you can chop it up if you like, but you know, the spinach does wilt down. So I'm just adding the baby spinach straight in. And just let the stirring do its job. Mm -hmm. 
Now, with this, you don't want to overcook it because you don't want the pasta to actually go um, gluggy. So once, once the, the, the liquid has evaporated a bit, um, you can let it sit and it will actually thicken up on its own. So to that, I'm going to add salt. Now salt, depending on um, your broth, as to how salty it is, um, you, the salt is more there just um, to taste. So that was just vegetable salt, Himalayan vegetable salt? Yeah, so yeah. that was that was just um, your, your Himalayan salt, or veggie salt, if you like. Okay. And it's just a matter of stir, stir, stir. And before you know it, it's done. Dinner's ready. So I'm going to turn it off now. And though it looks, it, it still looks like there's a lot of liquid in there, it may look like that at the moment. Just the camera to your right, to your right. So That's it. Yeah. Um, but as it sits, it will thicken up. So the, the actual samples should be coming out shortly. And after that, you put it into a bowl and you can garnish it with your parsley over the top. And that can be used as a side, um, side dish to um, your dinner or, but it, as you heard from Larry, it was a hit. The bowl was finished. So I said, just try it, just taste it and see what you think. And the bowl came back empty, so. And that's basically it. So very simple, very simple, very straightforward. And the samples should be coming out to you very shortly. Oh, Thank you. Very good. Sit here. We're, we're halfway there. Three more to go. So we thank uh, Sister Deborah and also to Tanya as well for the first two, our uh, first three. I thank Deborah for, for the two. You know, this is her very first one in our setting here, but taking, presenting two, oh, I can't do that. You know, so I was, I was worried when they said, oh, you am seeing tonight because someone else is going to do the talk. And I said, oh, I hope that. This is not the way up, you know, our MC, and then you do the talk the next time. So. And it's all in training. It's all it's training. In training. Yeah. It's good. I'm here to taste the food. That's all I'm interested a lot. Okay, now I would like to invite, I think Rosetta's next. Rosetta is going to be here getting ready for the carrot crackers. So all simple dinner you know a simple dish that we can have you know sometimes i think about food you know you take so many time to cook a meal and you just sit on the table to eat not even 10 minutes and you said oh i'm full and i said oh set a long time to cook but a short time to to eat and you finish yeah and uh, always a good you know when I found a hint, you know, when you are hungry and you're cooking, the food tastes a lot better. But if you're already full, have your dinner, and then you cook for the family, and yeah, the kids say, yeah, it tastes good, but they can't finish the food, so it must be a reason. You know, I find that also when you go to the shop, if you go to the shop, have your shopping while you're hungry, having had your dinner, Trust me, you're going to come home with a lot of things that you, is not necessary, you know. But if you go there, already had your dinner or your meal, and you go to the shop, you said, oh, I, ah, this is not, you know, not necessary to have this. And it's the same effect also when you have cooked your, your meal at home too. So make sure that you're hungry and then you cook the food simple like what, we look at it tonight. It's, it doesn't take long to cook this meal, is it? So I'm expecting the risotto to come a few, few days throughout the week. So 
I hope Tanya can't hear that. But yeah, it's, it's really nice. Try that out. It's on to you now, so I'll pass it on to Rosetta to continue with carrot crackers and uh, the next recipe here. Thank you. Thanks, Larry. Hi, everybody. How are we doing tonight? It's a bit chilly, isn't it? I walked outside and I thought, oh, really cold tonight. Anyway, hopefully we'll warm up in here nice and warm. Okay, tonight's recipe that I've got, it's uh, carrot crackers. And, you know, when you go to the shops and you have those gourmet little biscuits that are, you know, full of seeds and full of all sorts of things? Well, this is that sort of a thing. So it's, it's very yummy, very um, nice. So what we're going to do, we start off with um, cashew nuts. Uh, cashew nuts we sell downstairs. And um, I've just used the pieces because you don't need the whole ones because you're going to break them up anyway. So I've got cashew pieces. We put them in our food processor and we have to blend them up a little bit so that they're, um, they're finer because we don't need such big pieces. I'm going to make a bit of noise now just to break this up. You hear it when it starts to change sound, that it's mashed it up the way you want it. Okay, so we've got, um, it's just um, fine, fine, um, chopped, finely chopped cashews. Now the rest of the ingredients, we just add everything in into our uh, food processor. So it's going to all go in together. So we've got um, carrots. Here's another one. My husband's somewhere out there. I won't tell him that I'm putting carrots in again. Oh, he's over there. <laughs> anyway, I had to use up all these carrots. There's four cups of carrots here, just grated up. He has eaten it and he liked it, so that's a good thing. Uh, then we've got flaxseed. Flaxseed or linseed, whichever way you want to call it. We have some that is um, ground up. We have three quarters of a cup of um, ground up linseed, which you can buy, or if you buy it whole, you can actually just put it through the blender and it'll, it'll um, make it all nice and fine. So it's just a matter of putting that in as well. And flaxseed is really good fiber for you. And it also um, is a really good, it combines everything as well. It sort of turns a little bit gluggy, so it's like an egg sort of consistency. Um, and then we also have um, a quarter of a cup of whole linseeds. So that gives it that nice nutty flavour into the mix. And the um, yeast flakes, again, which give it a lovely taste. And this is all very quick and easy. It's just a matter of putting everything into the, into the food processor. Then I've got some thyme, fresh thyme. I've um, actually picked out of my garden this morning. <laughs> Thanks, Glenn. <laughs> and a little bit of salt to add to the mix. Now it's just a matter of putting it all into the blender, the um, food processor. Mixing it all together. I might have to, um, depending on how, what sort of a food processor you have, sometimes it'll blend up all in one go, sometimes you have to stop it and... Um we'll see how we go. Okay, it stops moving around, so I have to um, move it around myself in here a little bit. Uh, 
I haven't tried it with almond meal, but I don't think it would it wouldn't have that um, the binding effect. Although instead of the cashews, you could probably use almonds instead of the cashews. But I wouldn't say instead of the linseed, no. Instead of the cashews, yeah. Give it another mix. Oh yeah, thank you. That's why it's not mixing properly. I forgot to put the water in. Okay, thank you, Veronica. Yeah, you should follow the recipe. <laughs> Someone's reading the recipe. Good on you. <laughs> yes. Okay. So it comes out a little bit sort of um, gluggy and it starts to stick together. That's when it's ready. So now it's just a matter of... ...bringing it out. You see it's quite gluggy and it sticks together. And then the fun starts. So what we're going to do, we're going to put it on our... Um, baking tray, lay down a piece of paper, baking paper. I'll move this out of the way so I've got room. With that, yes, it's done. Okay, so I've got two sheets of baking paper. The first one we'll leave on our, on our tray and then we transfer our ingredients onto the baking tray you can pat it down a little bit now with this one depending on how thick you want it the thicker it is the longer it's going to have to dry in the oven okay but if you have it um, nice and thin it still takes an hour to hour and a half on low heat, 190, uh, sorry, 120 for uh, 60 to 90 minutes in the oven so that it um, dries out. So you're, you're really um, drying it rather than baking it. So if you bake it, it'll just go really hard. So now I'll put another piece of paper on top and roll it out. If you roll it to about oh, three millimetres, so it's nice and thin. It's going everywhere. It makes quite, quite a, um, a lot, so it's a good, um, good recipe. The more consistent the, the thickness is, the easier it's going to dry in the oven. And you can usually feel under your hands whether it's even, whether it needs a bit more in places. Okay, that feels pretty good. You could put it in the dehydrator as well. It'll probably take you longer though. Yeah, you could probably, you'd have to do it overnight, yeah. Yeah. 
It's quite wet, yes. Okay, we discard this one. We don't need that one. Thanks. And then we just get a knife and um, you score it. How big, how big crackers you want, you know. Four centimetres square. It's just a matter of scoring it now. It's just easier because later on, if you don't, you'll have to break it and it won't break evenly. But then again, you might not want it to break evenly, so it's up to you how you want to serve it. So once you've done this, it's just a matter of putting it in the oven. 120, nice low heat for about an hour, hour and a half. But you can test it. And that's it. And you put it in the oven and soon you'll be getting some samples to try. And my next thing, do you want to put that in the oven, the oven on? Uh, I've got the oven on here. I don't it's on. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. We'll go on to our next, next recipe, which goes on top of the crackers. Or not. <laughs> Depends if you want it on top of your crackers. Okay, this one is a really fun recipe. What we have is a carrot. Again, carrot. <laughs> um, we peel the outside skin off. Easily done. We all know how to do that. And then once we've peeled the outside skin, we don't need the, the outside skin because if you use it, it's a little bit bitter. It's not quite what we're looking for. I didn't bring a knife out here, so we'll forget about the top. Okay, now we get to what we're doing. We're just going to, it's easier with a, a nice um, peeler like this, which is, has a little bit of a thicker peel to it. And then it's just a matter of making strips. The bigger the carrot, the bigger the strips, obviously. And the smaller the carrot, the smaller the strips. But it, um, trust me, it's easier with a bigger carrot. <laughs> so it's just a matter of doing this the whole, to the whole carrot. You might be left over with some that you can't actually peel off. It's too thick left over. But you can use that for something else. the other side. So what we're going to do, we're going to add a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of smoked paprika and a little bit of salt. Then we mix it all together. Into the oven again. This time it's going to be at about oh, 180 for about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, the ones that you're going to get tonight I left in for 15 minutes, a little bit overdone, so I apologise for that. Um, olive oil, I think it's, what is it, one teaspoon, one and a half teaspoons approximately. Smoked paprika. So you just buy that in the supermarket. Smoked paprika has that lovely flavour, smoke flavour. And a little bit of salt. Now this is going to be the fun part. We um, will mix it all together. Just be a little bit gentle because you don't want the carrot to break up. You want it to stay in strips. So it's just a matter of mixing it up. Mmm, smells good. <laughs> I like that um, smoky flavour. Smells really good. Okay, once, once it's all coated nicely, you just lay it on the baking tray. 
and try not to overlap it so that it all gets evenly um, dried in the oven. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I was just going to ask, maybe I might need a paper towel. Excellent. So they're all different shapes and sizes, it doesn't matter. That just adds to what they are. And you can use this as, as a garnish for anything actually. You can put it in your sandwiches, you can um, garnish different um, dips or um, some sort of pies or use it. You can eat it straight, just like a snack too, it's yummy. Okay, that should do for this tray. Get it all on there. Fill in the gaps. Okay, that's that. And then we put it in the oven for, what did I say, an hour, hour and a half on um, 15 minutes. No, sorry, what am I saying? <laughs> I'm back on the other recipe. <laughs> um, in the oven for, um, at 180 for um, 15 minutes. But check that, okay? 10 minutes, 15 minutes, depending on the oven. I tried it at home on my oven and it took me a long time. And I tried it here and I thought, whoa, it's already finished, you know, and I left it a bit too long. So different ovens work differently. But then when it's finished, that's sort of what it's like. So it's a little bit um, rubbery when it's finished. Like what, sorry? Like dehydrated fruit, yeah. Uh, so it's a little bit rubbery, um, which is good. So it's still pliable, so you can add it onto, add it onto biscuits and different things. And then we also have um, how we're going to serve it. We're going to serve the biscuits that I've just made. And we've got this one's sour cream, but we also have a, a cream cheese one. So we're having uh, the biscuit, a little bit of cream cheese, and then this carrot on top. And Is that, that the tofuti? Is that tofuti cream tofuti, cheese? Tofuti, yeah, tofuti um, cream cheese. We sell them both down in the shop. And, um, and then last but not least, we've got one more thing to show you, and it's going to be our blackberry jam, chia jam. So I'll get Vivian to come out and show you that one. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rosetta. So soon that one comes out. How did you taste the creamy mushroom rossoni one? Tastes nice? I know, I know the good food day. So it's really good. So try that and see. It's a very easy dinner as well. Here also with the biscuits. I like this because you can put in flaxseed in there. And also as well, our next recipe, our... Um, the chia blueberry jam. You know, I like this ingredient, the flaxseed and the chia. Do you know those two ingredients have omega-3 in them? And omega-3 in them helps your, your brain as well to relax. And you can have a good sleep at night with that. Help with those who really suffer with like stress, anxiety, and the chia and flaxseed. Even flaxseed oil helps a lot with that too. So all those ingredients, most of these ingredients, you can find it down in the shop. So take advantage of the 10% discount. I have to make that clear. 10% discount tonight. You can go downstairs, find these ingredients. It will help you to go along with your cooking because you can find everything in web shop. Yeah? Vivian. I'll pass it on to Vivian for now. Thank you. All right, you can have a second. I'm still waiting on the blender. Here we go. Okay, we're good. Good evening, everybody. Hope you've enjoyed everything so far. We're down to the last bit, but I think it's pretty good. So maybe not the best for last, but it's pretty close. 
<laughs> okay, so we're going to make the chia blueberry jam that you're going to try on the crackers. Um, now, jam, some people might think, is a long, arduous process. You've got to cook the fruit down. This one's not like that at all. Um, so we're starting with some frozen blueberries. These have obviously defrosted a bit, so there's a bit of liquid in there. Um, this step is optional, but we've decided to sort of pulse the blueberries just to break them up a bit so they're not whole, but you can leave them whole if you like. Same goes for the chia. If you don't like the texture of like the whole chia seeds, you can blend them to a powder and then use them that way. Um, but yeah, it just depends on what sort of texture you like. So I'm just going to start with blending these up. Okay, excuse the noise for a sec. I've just blended them up a tiny bit and we're adding them to a saucepan. I don't know if you can see, it's, they're just more like chunky at the moment. Okay. So it's not a total puree, it's more... Not a puree, but again, no. you can if you want to. Okay, we'll turn this semi down. Okay, we don't want it to cook, cook, but we're just going to stir this for about five minutes on the stove, just to heat it up and release some more of the juices. Now, I didn't sort of research anything beforehand, but does anyone know any health benefits of blueberries to share tonight? We can have a bit of a show and tell. Say that again, sorry. Iron and antioxidants. Antioxidants. Oh, antioxidants, yeah. okay. Antioxidants go. are good to pick up the free radicals, <laughs> cancer-causing cells. It's a jam that's good for you. There's no sugar in this jam at all. The sweetener we're using is maple syrup. So the sample is both the carrot and the jam, correct? Correct. And you've got a plain cracker on there as well, so you can just okay. try it as is. I don't know if you've got an opinion about the carrot cracker with the blueberry jam, but I actually think it's the best combination on the plate. <laughs> What do we think? Opinions, feedback? Yeah? Thumbs up? I see some thumbs up. <laughs> Good. Yeah, so you just keep on top of this on the stove just so it doesn't burn the bottom. Just get it going. It is working. Very low. Turn it up a bit, speed it up. It's just to get it warm. All right, let's just pretend this has been going for five minutes. We're gonna just make this go quicker. But about five minutes just to get it warmed up. Um, when I did the sample one that you're trying, I could see some small bubbles form on the surface, but it wasn't boiling. It was just sort of like a film of bubbles. It's a simmering. Oh, like we go. We've got a simmer going already. That did turn it up, okay. So then we add the chia, the maple syrup. So you don't soak the chia first, huh? No. no. They just absorb the liquid in the blueberries, and that was lemon juice. Um, now, what we have found that you might want to add additional maple syrup and or lemon juice, and even a pinch of salt might just help to draw out the flavour. It depends on which blueberries you've bought. Um, we've had mixed results depending on where they've come from. So just something to bear in mind, but yeah, you can always tweak the recipe to suit. Um, and then you cook that for another five minutes or so until the chia seeds expand and start absorbing that liquid. Um, then you take it off the heat, sit it for about 10 minutes, um, and it's ready to go. Um, I think the recipe says it stays for about a week in the fridge in an airtight container. Um, and yeah, it's nice on bread, it's nice on the crackers. It's probably good on like a cheese platter type situation. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Freeze it. 
Yeah. Oh, good. And there you go. So you can freeze it too. Make it in bulk. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. There you go. So if you haven't used it in a week, freeze the rest and use it when you need it. I guess it just defrosts and you go for it. Oh yeah, or chuck it in a smoothie. We talked about smoothies earlier today. Brother Paul mentioned smoothies. The chia seeds are good for that as well. Really got it simmering here. Um, but yeah, basically, that's it. Really simple jam recipe. Can you show the camera up here? Where's the camera? Oh. <laughs> Can you see that on there? Yeah. So that will thicken up once it cools down, It does down, thicken yeah? up. So you can see it on the cracker. That's sort of the texture you end up with. Okay. So that was cooked maybe about two or three hours ago. Um, so that's just here? room temperature? Hasn't been refrigerated? That hasn't no. been refrigerated. That just okay. cooled to room temperature. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Good. Thank you very much, Vivian, for that. Thank you, everybody. Okay. How's it taste? Very nice. Very good. See, I usually go around here to collect the rubbish around. Can someone there at the back come with a bag to collect the rubbish before we finish? Yeah, it's uh, very simple, yeah? Tastes really nice. And I'm sure that you want a very quick meal all the time, and then you something simple but tastes so good. You know, you don't want to have a, like, a big plate of food and few nutrients inside that will input what like, your body will take, you know, but you need a like, small amount full of nutrients and that helps you in, uh, throughout the day. And you know, when you go, whatever you do throughout the day, but it's already that you have a good meal to fill you up for the day, yeah? So thank you so much for everyone who demonstrates for us tonight. So Sister Deborah and even Tanya. And I would like to thank these little boys and girls running around here. I would like to thank them also. Everyone's is putting in some good work so that we can have a, a good flow for tonight. So sorry for the beginning, we delayed for the start, but we're running on time, right? Look at that time there, we're right on a dot. Six recipes. Who knows that we're going to do six recipes in this amount of time. So we thank the Lord for that. And I would appreciate also your coming along tonight. You know, this is where we are. We're running our cooking demonstration in May, and our next one will be around October, yeah? So looking forward to that one. we got one more Monday to come. This coming Monday will be our very last one for this uh, month. And pass along the information to everyone. Come along, you know. You can't find any cooking demonstration somewhere that you have a recipe and you can taste the food too, can you? So come along, you can... You can find good food, impress your family with some good food. And it's very important as well that we keep everyone healthy around our community because a healthy community will be also a happy one. You know, happy as Larry here. I'm here. <laughs> so we thank the, you for coming along tonight. But for now, we'd like to call on uh, Pastor Paul to close us with no word of prayer before we go. Let's, let's bow our heads. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the lovely uh, fellowship we've had tonight and these food, the presentations, the scrumptious food, and we ask you to help us to take these things, Lord, home with us. May we apply it in our own um, kitchens and homes and share this wonderful uh, news, Lord, of health that you've given to us, the, the, the message of, of, um, of love and care for our bodies that you've given to us, that they might be healthy and live a full life and a life that's uh, prepared not for service not just here but in service above so we thank you so much for all these mercies and take care of us all now as we go from here bring us back safely uh, next next week we pray this in jesus name amen thank you very much we'll see you downstairs in the shop 10 percent discount for tonight
In case you haven't got the message, I think they want to move some stock downstairs. So. <laughs> 10% discount tonight. <laughs>